who has come to join this conversation. Um, it's the beginning of a conversation. Uh, we recognize that every GLAM <laughs> opportunity is different and needs customization. Uh, but we're trying to begin uh, mapping what those sort of strategies are that we're seeing emerge across <coughs> the implementations of GLAM partnerships. And I've asked a few panelists here to come and share their experiences, specifically <coughs> looking to uh, three questions, um, showing their learning and their best practices, uh, and looking to learn about common themes and outliers, plan ways that we can share our successful practices, um, and to discuss how to proceed along this learning agenda in general and how the WMF might best help the GLAM wiki community to do so. So the three questions we're sort of looking at today across the three presenters are how do you identify a good potential partnership? What steps can you outline that are important strategic points for planning and launching a successful pitch for that partnership? And what mistakes do you have to share that we can all learn from? Our presenters are Gillian White from Australia. I'm on Wikipedia and many of you probably know as well as Myla Joseph, which you also probably know, from the Public Services at the Library of New South Wales, and Mary Barbara Fisher, <laughs> from Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, so we're very excited to have them share, and we will be capturing uh, those key points that we can from their presentations as we go, and then we'll circle back to have a dialogue together about how we can apply different learnings or where we have challenges in applying those learnings and where we might go next. Jamie wanted to know uh, when, this program, when this session was uh, suggested, what went, what went, what lessons we could learn from attempts to establish <coughs> a pitch, a partnership with a GLAM, and I had a couple of these two experiences in which I've been closely, well, heavily involved. Um, and one of them was a very successful one, I think, as is evidenced by the fact that my um, my erstwhile boss is was Miley, who's sitting over there in the next speaker. And so the fact that, that here it shows a GLAM professional who's now here at the GLAM Wiki, I think is evidence in itself of its success. And, and um, I'm really pleased with that. The other event was um, not successful. And what I have done is um, detailed what happened, especially in the second one, in the hope that if this can be of use um, to, to other people. And also, um, from it, I extrapolated some, from both of the events, or both of the attempts, I extrapolated some principles which I'll share with you uh, so that they could be used as for other, other people. It's just a quick, uh, no, this is available, I've made this available, A, on Commons, and there's this presentation too. These are the two relationships that I was that I'm speaking about uh, briefly. The first one is uh, uh, it is the State Library of New South Wales where Miley works, and the second one is another museum in Sydney. Just it's an art museum. It's not a library. So um, my my idea is that they 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 have these two characteristics, and the first one seemed very much like an exploration. That picture on the left is a picture of a man called Matthew Flinders, who is an extremely skilled navigator, um, and in fact did so well at at uh, documenting and um, identifying the coast of Australia uh, that uh, his maps lasted for a very long time as a reference. And his sculpture is outside the library, so that's who he is. And the and the other one is just that. There's a big boat that ships that that lands at Sydney. There's the Harbour Bridge, and this regularly happens. And the reason I've chosen those is that they illustrate the feeling <coughs> I had from the two efforts. Uh, so it was like this: with the library, it felt like it was an exploration. When I was uh, working with them, it felt like we were kind of mapping out the coastline, and we were identifying potential 
ways of working together and we were getting to know each other and we were sending out little search parties to find things and then we identified ways of establishing settlements or what you might call projects like what could we do that would be productive and useful. With the museum it was quite different. Um, the museum was like that party boat. It came into shore it had a lot of anticipation and excitement. There was a lot of advertising. There was a terrific venue um, and everyone had high hopes and we didn't know who would come, so they were unknown. And then they sailed away and that was it. So that was it. So it, and it was quite frantic and quite um, frustrating. So these are the two, uh, two organisations, two of, uh, attempts at establishing well, a, a partnership with, with quite big, um, well-known, um, large collecting places in, in, in Sydney, in fact. This is what happened. At the State Library, we did a series of training and editathons. We talked a lot about share what goals we had. Um, we sort of got to know each other. It's a bit like this is about relationships. It really was like relationships, which is what Jamie had written. She said, what sort of relationship do you build? So they got, the first one is a, a careful sort of dating program, and the second one was like a, a blind date. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it was just a, a non-successful blind date. So we, we shared some goals, we did some training, we did a lot of things, and then I pitched to Miley a formal relationship in the form of a Wikipedia in residence, that was me. Um, we worked that through, um, we established it. Miley did, and she'll probably speak on that, she did a lot of um, work behind the scenes on how that could fit into her organisation mm -hmm. and then we, we worked it out and it was quite clear and well scoped and we proceeded. At the museum, what happened was there was a surprise proposal that is, uh, we didn't, the, the chapter and all the people in Sydney where it was going to be held did not know that there was an editathon advertised and proposed. And so it came upon us as a, a, a bolt out of the blue and we had to scramble to, to support it. So we had one hectic editathon, then we had a lot of further <laughs> events promised, um, we offered a lot of assistance not much of which was taken up. There was a lot of misunderstanding. So you see there's, there's two kinds of relationship building here happening. One is, one of the things you can see is that one took a longer time, the other's quite short. Um, what resulted was that there were a lot of productive events at the library. There were relationships formed between, say, the chapter, our chapter, and the library. Um, there were individual relationships formed between librarians at the library itself, like librarians who became working Wikipedians together. Um, there were organisational connections with the library and other libraries and the national uh, network of libraries. So it, it was very positive and there are a lot of possibilities for the future and a fairly good understanding, I think, of what the, the two organisations need. So it's, it's, it, it's good. At the museum, there was a growing and increasing set of the amount of frustration. I think they wanted to get on with it and they probably felt that we weren't helping. <coughs> Meanwhile, we were trying to help to say what was needed and reduce the risks. It ended in mutual disappointment and there's been no further contact. <laughs> um, this is my analysis from uh, something that I have uh, written in extensively and put on comments. Um, I think this is what, what you could take away as something we learned that at the library, and I think I caught their critical success factors. This means I think you need, you need this to be successful, and there are probably others, but this was coming out of my analysis. Um, you need some kind of prior relationship. 
you need to establish some trust, you need some <coughs> clear and evident alignment of goals, that is you understand what the organisation, the GLAM needs and they should understand a bit, and this is, this is difficult, this takes a little bit of time, um, what, what the wiki, what the chapter means or the community needs. You need a certain level of management competency and of course in the library that existed, Amali's a manager and runs a lot of projects and is very skilled at those and knows about how to keep them under control. And part of that was that she also knew how to scope it so that it didn't get out of control. Uh, and that was quite clear and very reassuring to me because having the scope <coughs> get out of control is a very quick way of failing. Um, you also need good communication and that sounds easy but what I mean by it here is that you have a mutual understanding. That is what one person thinks is similar to what the other person thinks. That's what I mean by communication, not just a lot of letters. Um, and that you need to have thought finally about some of the risks and implement some strategies to mitigate those. The chief risk is increasing frustration. That is that what you want isn't what they want and that, for example, uh, what you do is undone or that no one comes or that everyone is unhappy. It's, it's actually this kind of thing, more than, as you know, that an article isn't good enough, it's more that people are frustrated with their efforts or feeling un, unvalued or that, that sort of stuff. So the outcome was that with the library we have an <coughs> ongoing productive relationship, that is, I think, that the library staff and managers could contact our chapter at any time and be uh, oops, and be back. Thank you. And be well um, received and have a conversation and talk about it. The other event was the other uh, institution, the second proposed event over which there was a great deal of mis uh, uh, misunderstanding and, as I said, mounting frustration was cancelled and there has been no further contact and I suspect that any contact, in fact I've asked for more contact, but any further contact would be rebuffed. So this is um, the two examples and that's that's what I can um, contribute from in the sense of what you can learn and just um, more detail is is this what kind of things happened? There's these sort of people involved. That, uh, these these are sort of clear goals that we had. These are sort of activities that we did at the art museum. There was, was I would like to spend if I had a couple of minutes, a little bit of time just showing you the length of uh, the number of things and uh, that happened. But this this one, for example, the goals were not at all clear. Um, it was associated with another event. Um, there were a lot of people talking across continents um, at, at mixed purposes. Um, and I, the, the, in fact, the detail of that I have written out in full at this link here, which is now on Commons. Um, so I have at, I have written down all the, the, who said what to whom for the second for the second one in particular, because it went very fast over a period of three months, whereas the relationship with the State Library, and this is telling, is the period that I'm talking about is three years. Mm. So there's a three year relationship building compared with a three month disaster that was fast. So what happened is spelled out in that document on, on, uh, on Commons. And a lot of it, in brief, what happened is that the, the proposed initial editathon by the enthusiastic people at the museum was a surprise to us at the chapter, which resulted in my having to rush to support them. Then they wanted another one, and they were not prepared to do any more planning. And the more I insisted, and the more, or well, tried to help, and the more other people tried to help, the more they pulled back. Um, and in the end they just pulled out. And then they claimed that we were not supportive and that it was 
partly a gender issue, which it was not. So um, that's the, in brief, and that's my 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the more detailed information is in that document on the Commons, and Miley is speaking next. So um, at the State Library, we were really interested in how we could deliver library services, not through our reading rooms, not through our website and our catalogues, but the other online spaces that our community were using. So that's where Wikipedia fits in to the way we were thinking about it was, you know, we know what we're trying to do by sharing information. So <coughs> I've got at the top there um, a statement about how what we were interested in doing with Wikipedia was directly in line with our actual mission, which is where um, a heritage collection as well as a contemporary um, research library. We're the oldest library in Australia, so we have collections that go right back to um, settlement and pre-settlement around exploration and discovery as well as the Aboriginal culture. And in, we're very interested in providing equitable access to both that contemporary and historical knowledge. So in our partnership, we started with this idea of we've got an opportunity to engage library staff in short-term working groups. We were using uh, 12 weeks and we asked their supervisors to release them for um, half a day over those 12 weeks. And in which time we undertook to train them to edit and to actually create content and articles and develop the procedures because we had to develop our own internal procedures so that we could actually, <coughs> at the other end of our project, transition it to business as usual. And along the way we realised that there were great advantages in having a lot of expertise from the community itself coming in and helping us because we had to pitch the original idea and then reach out to Wikimedia Australia and ask for help with training because neither myself as the project of, um, leader or the project officer had a lot of experience editing. So we were lucky enough to actually have three trainers, we've got two in the room and um, also 99 of nine. Um, <clears throat> and I think in actual fact that triangulation was tremendously useful because all of our trainers taught us different things and I think sometimes you may not realise how much about Wikipedia and WikiWorld glam people don't know. So there are so many questions that you have, there are so many things that people with different areas of expertise um, could be useful. And I think that's actually one of the secrets to the longevity of the relationship is actually having different contact people that you've been able to go to and ask. Like when we had a problem with the Commons or when we've had issues with um, administrators deciding that a group of people in a room who are all newbie editors creating articles is, is a problem and trying to shut it down, that sort of thing. Um, to have people who are actually able to interact online on our behalf, I know that we're going to need someone who can help us with Wikidata. I know when I go back to work and say this is important to the state librarian, we need, we need to get on board with this, he's going to ask me questions that technically I won't be able to answer and I'm going to need to find someone in the community who can be my go-to person who can, I can ask a basic question, they can give me the detailed information and I can translate it back into librarian for the people at work. So um, the two of us who did a lot of the, um, the project operations and we acted really as a, a catalyst within our organisation. The idea was not to um, set ourselves up as the experts, but to actually create the opportunity for people throughout our organisation to participate in a working group, build their skills and then apply them to their work. And that happened. A lot of um, the 31 staff who were trained actually have it now as part of business as usual in their roles and the things that they do. And I've included a link to our project page which has got links to some of the group articles that they worked on, some of the, the newspaper articles that they worked on. Um, newspaper articles for library people are actually tremendously useful in, as a training tool. So you can actually, um, they're, so, they're so structured, they're so common that you can actually get people to work on a whole lot of them, which gives them practice, um, which as a brand new editor you, you definitely need. So I do have that <coughs> link there. Um, and 
So how do you identify a good potential partnership? Um, look at the organisational capacity. Look at the people that you want to go and work with at the, the museum, the gallery, the library, the archive. Do they have uh, some staff time available to partner with you or are you actually trying to walk in as a, as a volunteer um, to someone's already busy schedule where they're not able to actually spend the time helping you navigate your way through their organisation. I think you've, if you ask any of the um, institutions that have had really successful relationships with Wikimedians, they will have had someone either on staff who was part of that collaborative process or part of the planning or part of the internal communication. I can't tell you how many times I've stood up in front of all the library staff and shown them what we were doing and talked to them about what we were doing and why we were doing it and why it made sense and showed them how you could see you know, what articles linked to things and just help them to understand the value of it. Um, and I think that was really important um, within our own organisation. Um, you also need to have um, some awareness of the policies. Some of the obvious ones are things like copyright, do they have a policy about public domain and sharing um, images and, and that sort of thing already? Or are they an organisation that's actually still needing some help to understand the value proposition that you're offering of contributing things? Um, and is there a contact person that you'll be able to work with directly who can be your liaison person? Um, communication is tremendously important, Gillian's already mentioned, but from my perspective, I think one of the really big challenges is that we're living in two different time zones. Glam time is slow. <laughs> Glam decision-making time is, takes a long time. Um, it took us eight weeks from the point of saying, yes, we agree it's a great idea and we've got, got the opportunity to have a Wikipedia in the residence to actually get permission to, to make it happen. And that was because we were already having the conversations around the organisation. If you walk in cold, it's going to take longer, I would imagine, in many institutions. I think it's also really important to be able to articulate the win-win. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by that. Um, it's also a good idea to figure out what networks your GLAM, your target GLAM, already is part of. Because we're a tremendously copycat industry. And if you can point to other institutions that we look up to that we would like to benchmark ourselves against and say, well, they're doing it and they're doing it well and this is their outcomes, you're going to get a lot more attention. People are going to go, oh, OK, right, that would make sense. Um, and also there's this idea that, you know, if they did it at the State Library of Victoria and the place didn't burn down, well, you know, we could probably try it. <laughs> but there's also... Um, Maybe it's not the same everywhere, but you know, they did it at State Library of Queensland and we'd like to be better, is also something we, we do say. Um, not all GLAMs are the same. They've all got their own objectives, and the closer you can um, help them to deliver on their objectives, if you can find it in their mission statement and show them how it is that you can help them deliver, you're actually going to get a lot more airtime. People are going to listen to you a lot more. And being able to speak their language is really important. Um, by that, I mean we don't understand a lot of the terminology that's used, but we do understand a lot of the ideas. Um, for example, librarians have this idea of authority control. Sounds like we're into world domination, but it actually is exactly the same thing as the people in the wiki world who make sure there's the right number of spaces between you know, the dash in dates and things like that. So we just don't... World domination. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, we do understand, we just don't know the terms. And I found that tremendously challenging because you can look up anything, you can find out how to do anything, but if you don't know what it's called, it's hard. good luck finding the right template or the information you need. So, okay. Um, successful steps for planning and launching your priorities. You need to be able to demonstrate a match between priorities, as I mentioned, point to those benchmarks, but also sustainability. If you can talk to the people in the GLAM about um, how you can help this to be an ongoing relationship. Um, I mentioned we had to develop procedures, and that was really important because we needed it to transition as business as usual. I can't sit next to every person who's now got to do editing at work. 
I can't even be the person who trains all the new staff who need to learn how to do editing. So we had to develop really good training materials so they could do that. Um, so those ongoing links are important, especially as things continue to evolve and change. This, I think, are my hot tips for developing your what, the win-win statement. If you're trying to make a business case to a GLAM, um, one of the reasons they should get on board is collection discovery. They spend a lot of money on their own websites, but they don't have nearly the audience that <coughs> you can reach through working closely with Wikipedia. It's also about exposure of staff knowledge and expertise. There's a lot of people who work within GLAM institutions who don't have an opportunity to share <coughs> some of that expertise with the wider community. And if you show them how they can do that, that's actually going to be quite a popular thing. Um, a lot of us want to achieve community engagement. A lot of us have that as a specific objective that we're trying to achieve. In our case, we work closely with 102 public libraries across New South Wales. So being able to do things that work with them is really important. Crowdsourcing knowledge is also something that, particularly speaking as the L in GLAM, the libraries are really interested in doing. Um, open data contributions. Um, you, you need to be able to articulate the value there and um, show them the statistics, show them the metrics, show them how many people are viewing articles that include those images that they've contributed, even if it's only been used as an illustration for something, you'll blow their minds and it gives them the data that they can go back to the more senior people who are going to decide whether they can proceed with the project or not and actually win hearts and minds. So the evaluation is really important. Building those staff skills and capability, tremendously important. This slide is black for a reason. <laughs> These are the dark arts that you must develop if you're going to go into a glam and be successful. I mentioned the communication. You must be able to help the person like me find good examples of how they can get internal policies and procedures happening. You must be able to help them articulate the difference between notability and significance, and in a way that's not going to offend the curators and people within their organisation. You need to be able to show them how to develop a project page, how to communicate what you're doing within the wiki world, but also it draws together for your own organisation what you're doing and you're able to actually share it. Show them the talk pages and user pages. They probably don't even know they exist. Um, teach them how to communicate with the local chapter if that relationship doesn't already exist. Um, attribution and identity is a really, really difficult one. If you're a paid editor, if you're an employee of a plan, you need to be able to um, put on your user page really clearly how um, you're actually authorised to be doing this, but that you're also well aware of the limitations of what you can and can't do. In our case, we borrowed um, the guidelines from the US archives, their draft staff editing guidelines, and actually were able to get those up through our executive team at the library as our own actual official policy. So then when bad things happen and people hack our article, I can go back and say, well, I can't fix everything. I can only just change some things. Um, and deletion. Um, this is absolutely terrifying because if you've got permission to release content, to spend staff time on contributing content, and as happened to us, you come in one morning, someone's run a script overnight in another part of the world that has flagged every image you've contributed for deletion, having a heart attack is your first problem. <laughs> <laughs> Reaching out to those, you know, I said how important it is to have some Wikimedia <laughs> so you can go, <laughs> what do we do? Um, it would have shut our whole project down overnight, end of story. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, can I ask, uh, how do you, because I can see that you, you foresee this in advance, and I was wondering, how do, how do you prepare uh, to avoid deletion? <laughs> Or, or, yeah, you know, it's a good, it's a good question. We did three things. Okay. So um, we used the OTRS process thoroughly. Mm -hmm. We um, had it on our project page. We had um, links on a page to all of the images that had been contributed mm -hmm. as authorised images. We had a category created that said that there were images contributed from the 
State Library um, as distinct from, from our collections, but ones that we had at ourselves put up, and you'll find that on our project page. We have the project we, page and we have three categories from the library. Yeah. Images that are in the library, images that the library staff have made, and, and images, images about the, the library, library, like pictures of the library itself as a build the building. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. And one of the trainers was a Commons bureaucrat. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, yeah. and very calm in a crisis, I have to say. Um, now, we, um, the other thing we did was we watch listed everything that our staff were working on, yeah. so that if there were changes, we were aware of them and um, we could respond appropriately and quickly. Um, but as I say, that was a huge risk, so it, it's something that you would need to manage for, on behalf of your GLAM, you need to work closely with them so that doesn't happen, because if it does, it's going to send you back severely. Um, and also, newbie GLAM editors in the wiki, wiki ecosystem, they get <coughs> bitten a lot. And I know that happens to all newbie editors, I know that is something that people would, it doesn't? Okay, well it does to us. <laughs> the whole Australian thing. You can't probably see this, but there's a link here. Um, we, one of our most experienced people was in a room training a group of people. They had set up um, talk pages on all the user pages with information to say, I'm a new GLAM editor, I'm learning, I'm in a training session, etc. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> um, but you'll be able to read it for yourself to see that there was a whole debate from the administrators about how um, worrisome that activity actually was, that nearly involved all the articles that they were busily learning to create being deleted. It's not really the what you want to achieve, would be my suggestion. <laughs> um, there's also three articles that we have published about the work we did. We don't have slides, we just have a video um, that Barbara right. will want to But taking an account of the time, um, I, I might just start to give you a, a short perspective on, on what fields we are working within the GLAM um, field. I've been working as a GLAM curator now for almost exactly three years now. I think I started the 12th of April. And um, we have a strategy that we can uh, call outreach, exhibit, and encounter, which pretty much <coughs> fills in with what you said. We we try to outreach to many glams at the time, um, both by um, being partner in a in the biggest glam conference in Germany, which is called Zugang um, Gestalten or Shaping Access, and um, already in the beginning we created this brochure following the Swedish example and this uh, really helps us uh, to both explain like what what is it all about this GLAM thing. Um, you have to take into account that GLAM in Germany is uh, has a bad taste uh, because glamorous is not something a GLAM institution wants to be. They're a serious institution <laughs> uh, and GLAM has uh, a flitter uh, so uh, they don't really like it. But um, glamorous, they're German. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we, we try to be very serious in our, all our um, publications. And then we have this part that um, uh, you said about yeah exhibit. Uh, we, we have to um, exhibit what we are doing, and, and um, we do this both through that big project called In Da Vinci, which is the um, hackathon on culture, where we actually get products what what could be achieved by open content. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, this is going to take place in, in a week now in, in Berlin, and um, the very important thing is the name dropping when you are uh, mm -hmm. talking to GLAM institutions. Oh, you know, the other day I was uh, talking to your colleague at the other GLAM institution, and they are very interested. So I mean, this is this benchmarking um, we heard about. So uh, it's not so much to show them so many cases, it is more in the conversation, yeah, actually the name dropping. Um, and then, very important is the, the real encounter, at least for German GLAM institutions, it is not very familiar to work with volunteers. This is something they're not familiar with. Um, we do have 
supporters, uh, supporter organizations. They are normally called volunteers, but all they do is giving money. And uh, they are not participating within the GLAM institution. The GLAM institution consists in highly trained staff, and um, they are all scientists, and they are very important, and they consider volunteers editing in the Wikipedia, let's say, with some hesitation. Um, so what we need is, is to create a platform where they could actually meet and get to know each other um, on a base that um, makes it easy for them to um, estimate each other afterwards. And for that we have um, um, formed this format Glamour Tour um, with the, um, the movie and maybe you could show the movie uh, without we'll you. There's uh, the... Um, um, there were English subtitles. Oh, okay. The important thing about the Glamour Tour thing is that we have an opportunity, a, a solid format you can offer to the Glam Institution, so you don't have to spend so much time in figuring out what could we do it with each other. We have like some different, like I go there, or, or the, the, the Glam volunteers go there with a like a little bouquet of, uh, of different measurements, like what could we do together. So one thing would be having the glam, glam on tour station, which is mainly an editor thumb going for three days and uh, you will have a photo excursion and the staff people from the glam institution are participating. Um, yeah, I think without the sound it, it works better. And, and uh, if there are volunteers in the sense that Anglo-Saxons would define volunteers, they may participate there as well. And this gives is this first relation building, which from my um, understanding GLAM work is all about. It's about relation building. And that, that also leads us to maybe the, the most important lecture I had in those three years. Um, it's being patient. Um, if you don't achieve fast, quick wins, sometimes you do, but most of the times you just need to be patient and keep on reaching out for them, <coughs> for, for the GLAMs, both for the GLAMs and the GLAMsters, so to speak, like the GLAM volunteers within the Wikimedia movement, both of them are kind of <coughs> divas, I would say, uh, which you need to address <laughs> everyone <laughs> in its specific way and being patient with them. Um, I would like to give you some examples. Um, the Wikipedian and Residence program is a very popular program uh, internationally. And when I started in 2012, the first thing I had to do in the first 10 days was, oh, we're going to have a Wikipedian in Residence. It's going to be the first time and you're going to somehow make the draft of what it's all about. Okay, um, as I didn't know anything about Wikipedia until that day, um, when I started at Wikimedia uh, Deutschland, I was uh, an art manager before. Uh, it was quite a challenge, but um, um, the, the outcome was terrific. We had like lots of media coverage and it, it was very nice. Uh, it was with the German Archaeological Institute. And that, it was a very nice name dropping that turned out of that institution because the German Archaeological Institute is, uh, I don't know, uh, the English word for it, it's like a grand dame um, of, of the culture institutions in Germany. So like if you, if you want to um, really impress somebody, you say that you have a collaboration with the German Archaeological Institute and then the people go like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but taking taking going down to the what what the foundation for instance is counting as um, metrics um, like how many articles were, were done how many photos were uploaded um, how many uh, staff did you train then I would say the outcome wasn't wasn't so impressive but um, it has been a very good door opener for us. Um, we through the um, um, how do you say that the introduction like the, the the German Archaeological Institute actually made us go to conferences where we could be presenting 
our ideas of free knowledge where we normally as an institution would not have access mm -hmm. because uh, only through them we would be able to, to uh, go there. And together we developed a new format which is the um, Wiki, uh, Wikiversum World Cafe uh, where we would give a short introduction into uh, what is free license and why this is a success formula within not only the Wikiverse but um, the whole open source movement. And then we will have real volunteers, like you can see them, you can touch them, you can talk to them, <laughs> that explain how Wikipedia works, how Wikimedia Commons works, and how Wikidata works, which are the, the three most interesting projects for GLAM institutions. And um, so this, this was the, a very good income, which you are not measuring through the ev evaluation schemes of um, the foundation right now. Um, and we had we had another um, Wikipedian in residence at the um, um, History Museum of Berlin, also in the first year when I started. And there I was like in the first year I was really disappointed. Nothing turned out of that. I mean, though this institution was simply not ready. I was as frustrated as you said about that museum. Nowadays, this museum also through through that Wikipedia in residence, they have learned that digital agenda is something they have to have on their on their daily scheme. Something that your library did before you you talked to Wikimedia. Um, this institution started the other way around. They said, oh, we want to have a Wikimedia in residence, and they didn't know what it was all about. They hardly knew anything about the internet as well. So, I mean, it was, in the first year, nothing turned out. Today, they are good multiplicators, you say so, multiplicators, yeah. um, <laughs> among the GLAM field because they are contributing um, to um, Coding Da Vinci with new data sets. And, um, and this really helps us to refrain, look at their example, what they are doing, and they manage to find free possibilities to um, to apply free licenses, to put things on the public domain despite it has been uh, digitized <coughs> by a very important firm which claims that this means new copyright for them. No, this uh, you can choose this example in order to talk to them. So in the long run, like two years later, uh, they turn out to be good friends. And um, the, the last example of uh, Wikipedia and residence was highly distributed, um, discussed within the volunteer um, community. That was with the Broadcasting um, Corporation. Um, it also didn't turn out in many, many new content on the free license, but at least in some. And this spurred the discussion with, uh, within other broadcasting systems that said, oh, if they are doing it, we should maybe do it as well. And, uh, and then uh, nowadays we have some of the local or, or regional broadcasting systems that um, are uh, visiting the open editors, edit, uh, open <coughs> editing events. Um, with volunteers in order to develop their own articles. So um, combining the whole of it, it, it is having on one side, making sure that people know you are there. That's very important. Oh, sorry. Um, and the second thing would be be patient and always ready for a new idea. Okay, so we're really, um, short on time. We do appreciate so many of these things that have come up today. Um, I do want to run through what we pulled. I'm not sure if there's a if there's an interval in between the session and the next. None at all. Okay. So I don't actually want to post them because then I'll have to unpost them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hold them up and just refresh people's minds. I would like everyone to take a chance. Um, we obviously don't have time to dialogue now, but if you could put your sort of leaving thoughts, your remaining questions and challenges to next steps on this um, sheet up here. When we get to the bottom, we'll get a new sheet. Um, we'll take this. We're going to make some learning patterns and some documentation. And if you 
could please also, if you're interested in pursuing the dialogue, um, to let us know either your username or your email so we can let you know when those go up on Meta and we can continue this online. Then we'll have, we'll have a sheet have, going. We'll have this list. Perfect. Yes. It's already almost um, over here. Has, uh, any, so I mean, if anybody missed it. I, I'm not on it, but I, does that matter? I'm like, we are already no, I, okay. I totally know how to get to the panel. <laughs> so, okay, so just important green lights that we went over. Um, surprises, um, engagement could be a good thing, right? When the GLAM community is scheduling edit-a-thons and you find out last minute, it's a good sign. And even though it could be a blocker and an issue, you can make it into a green light and just um, answer it, right? Uh, mission alignment is, was of critical importance. It was mentioned by two of our presenters. Management competency on both the side of the Wikimedian as well as on the institution in terms of project management, another um, critical feature. Uh, having a liaison that can work um, is another green light. So the community uh, liaison as well as the GLAM liaison. Possibilities for a future development. So it's maybe not just this one thing in a singular interest, but a, a, a growing partnership. Um, so clear scope in a proposal that um, everyone's on the same page with. Um, strategies to prevent deletion, make yourself known, show up that your activities through categories and having your, uh, your group's project page so people can find out what's going on there rather than rapid delete. Um, provide the metrics to your GLAM institutions, letting them know how you're going to affect their access and their reach. Media coverage can also be a green light. Of course, if it's not, then can I just make the point between media coverage and the surprises, which you've turned into a positive? No, it's the also media, in our negatives. Just wait until we get there. The The media coverage plus a surprise was the biggest, I think, problem. And I'd, I'd like you to put on the list that contacting the chapter, if you're a glam, is absolutely critical because the surprise is impossible to manage unless you're a big professional. Right. Which is why there's a question mark on here because it was presented um, in Barbara's as a real like enabler and a multiplier effect, but it could also be a challenge if you're not in sync with your partners. So, um, glam monitoring of content also was a, a thing brought up. So that the glam's actually paying attention what happens to our uploads. Um, glam interest in Wikimedia as a, a mode, like that they're interested in the way Wikimedia works to share information. A commitment from senior management. Trustful relationships. Again, the digital agenda, interest in Wikimedia as a mode um, platform where Wikimedians and uh, GLAM staff can actually meet so that there's actual regular exchange. You don't end up with those blind dates that go nowhere. Um, outreach to GLAMs at uh, many GLAMs at a time so you can sort of feel out multiple partnerships and choose those ones that have the most green lights. Alignment of goals um, to articulate the win-win. Actually, this came up a few times, too, that this win-win, um, the mutual benefiting nature of these partnerships needs to be very explicit. Um, and that there's internal catalyzation and skill building as part of the institution's commitment um, is what was highlighted with that. And of course, preparing for long-term engagement is probably a goal that should be um, strived for if you want to have the most promising partnerships. So the red flags <coughs> were unclear goals, oh. uh, paid editing and conflict of interest, uh, big promotion is not equal to specific activities. What does that mean? That means, means, it that, means, means that they yeah. promote something that's not planned. Okay, so that's yeah. the negative side of the yeah. video. It's, yeah. it's, it means promotion without any planning just is nothing. Yeah. And that's what surprise proposals can also be a bad thing and a red flag. So pay attention to when it's a good thing and you can you can like mitigate that threat or if it's just a threat and you can't mitigate that. And of course, once you do mitigate a threat, making sure to communicate. We heard that that didn't happen again, right? Um, so those big expectations were also a potential problem and activities with lack of planning. So I think we are out of time. Yes. And so I'm just going to ask as everyone leaves the room, um, make sure that you do just jot down um, on the white piece of paper what remaining questions, challenges, or blockers indicate that clearly with the way you notate your question. And we will continue online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.